Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Do you a woodchuck have any- woodchuck as much wood as a woodchuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood. All right, welcome back to the channel. I'm Hank Strange. We're hanging out with Sam Andrews of Andrews Custom Leather. Sam, nice how's it going? Nice to have you back here. Awesome. Yeah, it's great to be back. Great to be back. We wanted to do a, like a Q&A. I think this is the second one. We did one already, right? A couple, couple of years, years back. Yes. Yeah. In the old shop. Absolutely. So we're going to do a second uh, Q&A video here, try to answer as many questions. Um, Sam probably gets a bunch of questions all the time. <laughs> Lola and I, we're looking at the video so we see all the questions that come in. And by the way, Sam does like see some of the questions on the videos, but you're busy making yeah. holsters most of the time. I, I review them once in a while. But yeah. I- <laughs> yeah. Really Usually people, I see a lot of comments, people talk to you. They don't realize, like, it's actually Hank Strange channel right. that it's right. on. <laughs> so they ask you questions directly, and I'm like, yeah, you need to call <laughs> Sam. So let's start from there, because you did move. So tell us what's going on with that, where you're located, how people can get in touch with you. We moved two years ago to St. Augustine. I outgrew my last shop. I had it jammed full. I couldn't even move in there. Mm-hmm. So we moved to a place three times larger. It's heavenly to have room to work. Yeah, you got a lot of room, but you've also filled up this place already. Well, uh, I will do it. I, I will outgrow yeah. this eventually. Yeah, which is, it's a good thing. That's a good true. thing. Lots That's of cool true. stuff going on. So how, and how do people get in touch with you now? I'm assuming the number's changed. The number changed. The number is on our website and all the contact information is there. So if they go to andrewsleather.com, there's everything you need. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, we'll, in the description of this, you'll have a link, and we'll probably throw in the new number and all that kind of stuff. They definitely have to call you to order things, right? Right. Because of all the variables and the custom work that we do, it's better if I speak directly to people. Right. There's lots of little details that can get lost otherwise. Okay. Now, I know you do have some finished items. We do. So what's going on with that? Well, we started an online store so people could see all the things that are in inventory. There's a link to it on our main page. And I'm also keeping on hand all but finished, pre-made, very common gun stuff. Glock, okay. 1911 SIG, yeah. for the so popular a, things. Uh, a, a, like a smaller lead time or whatever for exactly. folks to get this those. Exactly. This way, yeah. they just need to be molded and colored. It cuts many, many, many weeks off yeah. the waiting time. <laughs> now, with the bigger shop and more help, I'm finally able to build ahead on the popular things. Right. Absolutely. And um, what is the normal lead time? Because I know there's people that maybe want to get something for someone's birthday or for Christmas. What's the lead time and what do they need to do with that? It depends on if it's a production item where we might have one ready to finish or if it's a pure custom item, Mm -hmm. something I have to build right from the ground up, especially if it's something I have to design for the first time. That can take months. There's a long lineup. Yeah, get in touch. And uh, if you're looking for a Christmas gift, when is a good time to order the Christmas gift? <laughs> Again, you know, up till a couple of weeks from the holiday for things that are in inventory mm-hmm. or ready to finish. But if it's a pure custom item, you don't really want to go much past the end of September okay. for Christmas orders. Yeah. People always jam me up right at the end. They'll be calling up the week before Christmas wanting elaborate and strange things made I can't yeah, help them right absolutely so try to get those in uh, try to get those in early and um, you know we've got several videos at this point so it's not like right. we don't have videos a lot if you t- if you take the time to check out the videos those will help you out um, are you still getting a lot of calls though oh yes Questions? a lot okay. of people who see the videos either they want the holsters or they're making holsters themselves and they want some pointers and advice mm-hmm. it's all good Okay, and um, I don't know if this, because we're going to go to some questions. We posted stuff on social media, and I'm going to go there and and ask those questions. But um, one thing that comes to mind is, can people come here and see you, or are you trying to, like, minimize that? Well, people do come by. We always appreciate if you call first, just Mm so I'm not out on an errand or something. Right. We don't really have a storefront or a showroom, but a lot of people like to see the very messy shop (laughs) <laughs> see how all this stuff is accomplished. Yeah, see how where the magic happens. Exactly. Yeah, awesome. Are there any questions that you get all the time that maybe you'd like to take this opportunity to address or comments you see in the videos? Anything that you could think of? You don't have to think of it all right now. We've got some time to jump into it. Nothing comes to mind immediately. Okay. Understood. So let's let's uh, go in here, and I'm going to pull up the... Uh, so I made a post. 
So most of these, I'm going to, actually all of these, I'm going to pull from the post up there. So Uncle Mike 5012 says, I'd like to know what reference material he recommends for someone who wants to learn to work with leather, who's his favorite teacher, or who inspires him. Well, most of what I do, I just learned on my own. Mm -hmm. Years of trial and error. There, there wasn't really a guiding book mm -hmm. or anything back when I started, because it was 43 years ago. Right. Now, the Tandy Leather Company has books on how to do most things. Now, they may be simple projects, but the principles are the same. Yeah. And that can help you get started. Tandy Leather Company? Tandy Leather, they've been working with hobbyists for many decades. Okay, cool. And, and that's, that's where you get a lot of your stuff from, right? I get a lot of tools and hardware from them, mm -hmm. and they're a good source. They have leather, and they're also very friendly and good with advice for people starting out. Yeah, cool. So you can call those guys exactly as well. All right, thanks. And thanks to Uncle Mike. Uh, Cujo74S, who actually won a holster from you. So congratulations to him. He got, I think, got a really nice uh, holster, and uh, he was really, really happy with it. Oh, good. Okay. So uh, we do, we do give away stuff from Andrew's Custom from time to time. So thanks to Sam for that. Um, he, his question is, when will your holsters be featured in a film again? <laughs> uh, we've just finished two that are coming up soon. The main one is the new Tarantino film which they're just finishing making right now. It's called Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. You can look it up online. There's all kinds of information about it. Yeah, we just can't show the holsters or anything like that right now. I have right to now. wait until the movie is in release in the theater before I can show pictures of the holsters. There. Yeah, and obviously you can see above us, if, if you can see up here, there's the Magnificent Seven movie, which the holsters are featured. If there's someone watching this that's oh, never seen the stuff before. It's worth a watch. Good shoot em up Yeah, very good movie. And um, it's not the only movie that your holsters have been in, right? Oh, what no, we movie? did um, smaller pieces for like the dictator that Sasha mm -hmm. Cohen did. Mm -hmm. There's one of our Stingray shoulder holsters in Fast and Furious. I think it's number eight. I can't keep track of it. Okay. And we also just finished a bunch of stuff for Russell Crowe, who's making a movie in Australia for Australian release about Ned Kelly. He's kind of the Jesse James of Australian folklore. Mm -hmm. I doubt we'll see that one here. Yeah. But Maybe, maybe like straight Who to knows? video or something like that in the future. You never know. Anything's possible. <laughs> yeah, you never know. Um, Rimfire86 says, um, I would listen to Sam read a phone book. <laughs> His voice alone <laughs> would make it compelling. <laughs> so that's not really a question. Uh, oh, it's what a do you nice compliment. Yeah, Thank what do you, you say much. to that? <laughs> oh, yeah. what can you say? Yeah, it's pretty cool, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I get, we get those comments all the time on there that people like listening to you. I've even seen, and these guys, actually, there's a little bit of discussion going back and forward on his comment here. And I see um, there's guys out there that tell me that they put on the videos with you in it and when they want to go to sleep at night. I don't know. <laughs> How does that make you feel, Sam? Well, <laughs> my wife falls asleep when I'm talking to her, so I think that's fair. Yeah, Lola does that to me all the time. So I guess that's, uh, that's something built into our nature to soothe the women to sleep, right? It's there a superpower. <laughs> yeah, but that's cool. You do have a really good voice. And for anyone who doesn't know that in the beginning of my videos, most of them, not all of them, right. there's something in there that says this video is brought to you by... The Hank Strain situation. Exactly. That's Sam. People ask me that all, like, who is that guy? <laughs> in the beginning of that thing, it's Sam. Uh, there's lots of people I've seen comments. They said you should be doing, like, movie trailers. Well, I'm just waiting for Hollywood to discover me. Yeah. They, they can call up any time. Come on, Hollywood. <laughs> Get up on it. Uh, I'm his agent, Hank Strange. Ten percent. Ten percent. You heard it right here. That's contractual. <laughs> okay, so uh, Sakanuru Zero said, how much wood can a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood i just i didn't even realize that was in there so yeah thanks a lot for that question do you have chuck would chuck as much wood as he could chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood there you go absolutely <laughs> everybody knows that. so that's the answer to that one got you i'm not i haven't looked at all these questions before so uh it's more fun that way yeah uh sax hohes sax hohes uh, uh, looking for a good holster for a k-frame model 66 four inch mm -hmm. for winter ccw I'm having a hard time finding something. Um, thanks. And then he put his name, Jesse S. Mm -hmm. So do you have any uh, suggestions? Probably there? for a large revolver like that, a pancake or what we call a saddle-style holster that rides really flat and high mm -hmm. on the strong side, 
easiest to hide under even light clothing. Mm -hmm. You can use it in the summer as well. Yeah, okay. But uh, I've used them for end frame revolvers and wear it all day. It's not uncomfortable. Okay, very cool. Um, so let's see. Opt out of gun control has a question. And he's always here on the channel supporting us. Really good guy. Opt out of gun control says, can Sam make an Uzi rig? Uzi rig. You ever had a I have that? done the shoulder rigs for uh, Uzis, shotguns, MAC-10s. Okay. Uh, I've done one for a little M16, little nice. shorty. Oh, cool. So they were just custom one-off pieces back through the years. <laughs> It just yeah. depends on what people So if someone for. really wanted one, they can request that from you. I know as it's long as they're the going to be patient. Because yeah. the, okay. that kind of custom stuff has a long lead time. Yeah. Okay, so there you go. Opt out of gun control. Thanks for that one. Um, so uh, uh, Nidhog24 says, can he do a vertical Monarch rig for a 1911 with a TLR1, which is a, flat, uh, a light, a weapon light? The uh, Talking about the light or the red dot sight? Uh, it's a light. It's a light. It's the um, light, yeah. No, not really. I, I don't have any way to make holsters for guns that have the lights on them, especially the big lights, mm -hmm. which can make the forward part of the gun larger than the after part. If I open the holster up enough to take the light, the after part is unsupported and slops all over and wouldn't be secure. Yeah. Some, Usually it's mm -hmm. Kydex for that yeah. kind of thing because it has that springing clipping. Yeah, action. and you're not against Kydex. People out there no, might no. think you hate Kydex no. or Kydex must go. Everything has its place. Absolutely. So that's, that's you're probably better off with Kydex. I know that the TLR1 is probably a little bit like lower profile, but mm -hmm. still those are just not well, easy to do. I'm not familiar do. with all the lights. Yeah, like, exactly. Some of them are the size of a bloody grenade and you yeah. just have this huge thing on the weapon. Yeah, big honking light on there. I know you do, along those same lines, and that's not in here, you do make some um, sheaths for knives and things like that as well, a combo, for, right? For the shoulder holster mm -hmm. system that we do, we make sheaths for the little Smith & Wesson dagger, Okay. the mini K-bar, and the Tanto, the okay. cold steel Tanto. Okay. Those are the three standard sheaths that are options on the Monarch rig. Yeah, so if you want a Monarch rig and you want to have a knife with it, I think it's probably better instead of like trying to bring some kind of crazy like weird unique knife they have to oh, you just yeah. get like cold the exactly. cold steel yeah, those or... three work the best right and okay we already have sheaths set up and ready yeah okay so uh scott diebler says uh sam does beautiful work <laughs> and he spelt it out like b8 b8 to full work so there you go it's more sincere yes absolutely um, yeah, lots of fans out there that like what you do. You've I'm been doing this so for a long time. I'm so glad they like the work because yeah. I like doing the work. Yeah, and I, you know, I, as I travel around, I meet people all the time that, that have your stuff. Excellent. Yeah. So that's cool, right? They have great taste. <laughs> yeah, I feel famous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Todd Husey says, how hard is working with Stingray leather? Is there a leather that you do not like working? You got Stingray as long as you've got the right tools and a little bit of patience, mm -hmm. it's not bad. The, um, the little clippers I showed you when we were making the mm -hmm. grips are mm -hmm. the best thing I've ever found for cutting the stingray. And you have to use some kind of sheet metal shear because knives won't do it. Yeah, so well, that's a separate video. We actually have a video of Sam. He's doing now these 1911 grips in exotic leathers. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a video on that that I don't, I don't know. if This will probably come up first and then that it will come might. up. You know, but just because I'm going to do what's little, easy. They're little clippers made by Weiss. Mm -hmm. You buy them at Home Depot or Lowe's. Okay. They're little short blades, beautiful for the Stingray. Right. And you'll also want a Dremel tool with a couple of different stones for getting the rounded edge on the ray. Because okay. you can't use a beveler, it would destroy okay. the Okay, so tool. a Dremel, and then yeah. you want to get the stones in order to buff those down. Exactly. And there's okay. other question about the leather I don't like to work with. Mm -hmm. I'll do it, it's not a thrill, but quilled ostrich, the, the bumpy ostrich, okay. has a back on it that is so soft and layered, it, it's like a puff pastry, it pulls off in layers, Really, it's really difficult to get securely glued down, mm -hmm. and it wants to, to bunch and move, so it's more of a challenge. Okay, so there you go. So if you want, what is it, quilled ostrich? Quilled ostrich. Okay. We work in two ostrich skins. The okay. quilled has the bumps on it like you see on cowboy boots and so mm -hmm. forth. Then the ostrich leg is a skin I like a lot more. It's very firm, it's very tough, and it's got the scales running down the center. Okay, yes, I've that's seen that. That's the shin guard. Okay, yes. Oh, so that's tough. All right, great. So thanks a lot to Todd Husey. Uh, Kindval Customs wants to know, 
Is there any resources you would recommend to learn about different holster styles, specifically Western rigs? So it's kind of um, in the resources question that we got earlier, right, but they right. want to know about how do you figure out like all the different holsters that are well, out there. Well, there, there's a number of very good books on the cowboy guns and rigs history. John Bianchi, years ago, wrote a really good book. I think it was Blue Steel and Gun Leather. Mm -hmm. And he's quite expert on the history of these things. He, mm -hmm. At one time, he had a museum at his factory okay. with tons of these original rigs and okay. guns. And so that's a marvelous source for that kind of thing. Yes, and then if also if you want to, uh, Andrew's Custom, the website is almost like an encyclopedia. Lots of different options on oh, there, yeah. right? We've got yeah. uh, things we've designed from all kinds of eras as well as modern. Yeah, maybe you should do a book one day. In my spare time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would actually be a great idea, but not easy. Maybe if someone out there volunteered <laughs> to help you put that together. Have to have somebody done. following me around, taking yeah. down what I mumble. Yeah, yeah. It would be very linear. Yeah. Uh, this is why we have the YouTubes. <laughs> That's how you figure out that stuff. Um, and then this question is from Little Weird Shop. And it's a very uh, tongue-in-cheek question. The, it's, how many miles to the sun? Lots. Yeah, lots. He said, <laughs> I say a kajillion, kajillion. Cabillion miles. <laughs> it's over, it's a several billion, I think, but I don't I know. I have to look that up. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't come up in common conversation. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get away from the sun most of the time. <laughs> you know, the sun is, is like our biggest enemy. That's what will kill us all in the end, right? That's yeah, what's actually taken, no matter what we do with this yep. planet, the sun's taking it out one day. Yeah, a couple of billion years, I'll, yeah, I'll worry yeah. later. We'll be highly, highly evolved by then. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. So that's most of the questions. Uh, all of those that I polled came from uh, Instagram. So thanks a lot to, to those people there on Instagram that asked those questions. And uh, so before we end, though, we'll get to a couple of bonus ones. First of all, what's your background, Sam? What's your background? How did you get into doing this? Well, this was actually accidental. When I was 15, I started in the police explorers back mm -hmm. when I was in high school, wanted to do law enforcement. Mm -hmm. And I began making holsters just hobby, one for me, one for a friend, and then that mushroomed out of control. Mm -hmm. And by the time I'd been six years at law enforcement, I realized that making holsters was a lot more fun than dealing with drunks and idiots all yeah. the time. <laughs> Not to mention yeah. there's much less paperwork. Right, yeah. It's so never I was able easy. to roll the hobby into a business. Yeah, law enforcement is a tough job out there. It so is. So thankfully, you only did six years doing that? Oh, yeah. then, okay. From the time I was an explorer to the time I quit it, that was when we were out in California, at Concord okay. in the Bay Area. Yeah, okay. And it was a wonderful experience, wouldn't trade it, wouldn't go into it now. Yeah. Sorry, guys. It, <laughs> it's really stacked. It is me. tough. I think it's, it's tougher now to be a police officer than it used to be. Uh, there's not a lot of pay. Um, they don't put a lot of money into training and, you know, and then I don't think there's enough, uh, there's not proper communication, I think, with communities and police officers. Very frequently. And, all that kind of stuff. and nowadays, the minute you get out of your car in a call, you've got six people pointing cameras at you. Mm -hmm. And in a 20 minute interview, the six seconds where you sound the worst will get online. Yeah. So. Yeah. And it's, it's a tough deal. It just is a tough I deal. I don't think, I don't know if it ever has been an easy thing. No, but I have a great deal of sympathy for anybody in that profession yeah. these days. Absolutely. And like anything else, it's human beings. We do it. I think most of those guys are good guys. Sometimes you have like people who have issues just like you would find in anything else. Sure. Right? Yeah. Thankfully, they are very rare. Yeah. <laughs> so um, one of the things in the, like I, I would interject in terms of background is um, people always want to know from me why, like, is this your real voice and why do you sound like that? So can you tell us, like, where were you born? Were you born here in the States? Uh, born in Montreal. Okay, there you and go. And came to the States when I was five, so mm -hmm. really, this is home. Mm -hmm. And as far as the voice goes, I can only blame my grandfather. Yeah. My mom's dad had this basso profundo, mm -hmm. just amazing so it must be genetic yeah absolutely i think so and you've got like some british some uk well our family is got a complete dog's breakfast mm -hmm. irish english scottish and danish okay Take there you choice. go yes sure. absolutely this is how sam is all the time <laughs> i talk to him all the time it's not like michael jackson where michael jackson had that like little squeaky voice but in real life I'm pre i never heard michael jackson in real life for oh. all we know he sounded just like you 
Could have been. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have been pinching his vocal cords. That, that'd that. be so funny. <laughs> find, I want to see that video. Find some bootleg of Jackson <laughs> yeah. talking like this. Yeah, that would be real funny. But yes. So this is Sam. And did, were you always here in Florida? or Mostly. We, okay. We're here in Florida from about 69. Mm-hmm. Family moved up to California. I was there for five years, okay. late 70s, early 80s, then back here, and here we've been. Okay, awesome. And then I think there's one more question that, um, that we have here, another bonus question. Um, so how many hours do you put in each week here? Do, do you work like uh, seven days a week? Well, the simple answer is all of them. Um, okay. I'm in I here seven it. days a week unless my wife tells me I'm doing something else. Mm-hmm. And I generally quit work around 10 or 11 most nights. Yeah. Now, I do get a dinner break at 7. It's not completely yeah. cruel. And I know this as a fact that you still take work home with you. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I've got a, a smaller workshop set up in the garage. Mm-hmm. So if I've got a bunch of molding or something to do that doesn't require big machinery, yeah. I actually get to see my family a little. Yeah. If, if Sam is awake, he's pretty much working on something. Uh, what do you do like to unwind, to relax, or just recreationally? Uh, when I finally put the tools down, I go and grab whatever book I'm reading, sit in my den, and read until I've looked at the same page three times and I don't know what's on it. That's the sign <laughs> it's time to go to bed. Stop reading. <laughs> yeah. When the eyes start. Right. And, and you're a gun guy, right? Oh, absolutely. Okay. What kind of guns do you collect? Well, my collection is British Empire period, so round oh. revolution through World War yeah. II. See that old British gen? He's yeah. like one of those major generals. <laughs> Except I don't say yeah. harumph all the time. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I imagine you do. In my imagination, you say harumph <laughs> all the time. Well, they yeah. have to have big white mutton chops. Yes. <laughs> and what do they call those hats, those hunting? The, the, oh, the pith Safari? helmet? Yes, The yeah. pith helmet. Or the, uh, there was the overseas uh, tropical helmet you saw in the movie Zulu, that white canvas oh, okay. yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you, so your collection is, uh, say it again? Uh, yeah. like British Empire period. Okay. So it, it goes from like brown blessed flintlocks to the, the very last of the Enfield bolt actions. Okay. Plus Adams, Tranters, Webley's got a case okay. full of the pistols. Okay, very cool. And you had a Webley in this movie, right? Right. I loaned the production, my little Webley bulldog, for okay. Chris to use in the card trick scene. Yeah, so when the guys had him at gunpoint, I think they were gonna shoot him. Right. And then he did, he said like, let me yeah, do this card trick. Here's the card trick, and you yeah. notice, well, he was showing it with the right hand, he transferred it to his left, yeah. and then snuck the Pulled gun. out the gun, yeah. right. So that little bulldog, derringer, kind of. Well, no, of, it's, like, a, it's uh, a revolver. It's a revolver. It's a small revolver. Okay. 45 caliber, really tiny. Yeah. And they were quite popular in the actual American Old West. Yeah. Those little Webley hideout guns mm-hmm. sold for lots less than Colts. Yeah. And, you know, gambler, lawman, whatever, they like to have a little backup. Yeah. And so did you ha- do you have one of those, or...? I've got a, a bunch of different versions of that style of gun. Okay. Bulldog revolvers are short, large caliber guns. Mm-hmm. They were made by different manufacturers. Okay, but now you've got an official movie now it's gun. No, it's a movie memorabilia yes, piece. Yes, that's My official. My gun is a star. I'm so proud of him. Yes, that's, that's official. <laughs> if you don't have anyone else to leave it to, might I just suggest <laughs> leaving it to the Hank Strange situation? No. <laughs> have you got a foundation? Can we uh, take this off taxes? Yeah, it's called the foundation <laughs> of it's going in my safe. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's a really cool gun. Oh, that's absolutely. a really cool gun. All right, so thanks. I think we, we like hit a whole bunch of different questions. Mm-hmm. Um, I would suggest that if folks out there, if you guys have more questions or you think about stuff, put it in this particular video. Um, just make comments here and ask us any questions sure. that you have. We'll try to get those answered from Sam, or the next time we do a video like this, we'll get it answered. Not at all. Okay, how about that? Anything else you want to say before we get out of here? I just want to thank everybody for watching the videos and for all the wonderful feedback. Yes, awesome. Thanks a lot, guys. We're out of here.